what is it this year with peacocks not being able to identify their own eggs? Hey guys, so I just got back from our vacation to California. We went to VidCon, we went to Catalina Island. We did a bunch of stuff in LA and around Southern California. It was so much fun. We were gone for seven whole days. And if you want to see stuff about our trip, I'm going to be putting up blogs and stuff from our vacation and from VidCon and all of that up on my other channel, Fire Lily, which you can find in the description down below. But when I got back from our vacation, I found these little guys were our surprise coming home. So these are three little ducks and they are from eggs that my Khaki Campbell duck laid. And I've talked about my Khaki Campbells in videos before. Uh, it's been like a while since I've had them in any videos, but um, I have talked about them before. And she's, uh, it's, they're laying ducks, okay? So they lay about 300 eggs a year, and that's like almost every day. And they're, since they're laying ducks, they're not like focused on hatching their eggs. They just kind of lay them wherever, and she'll lay them just all over the farm, like one there, one there, one there. And so I'm shocked that she even managed to lay three eggs in the same place. And she actually happened to lay her eggs in a peacock nest. So the peacock hatched out these little baby ducks. Must have been like so confused when they actually hatched. And that just, you know, won't work. It's not gonna work for little baby ducks to be following the peacock around and then, you know, they're attracted to water and the peacocks, you know, kind of stay away from the water. So uh, we got these and I'm taking care of them. They are so cute. They're so friendly. Uh, they're just so tame and so adorable and fluffy. So cute. And so I'll show you guys how I'm taking care of these little baby ducks. It's been such a crazy summer with all of these baby chicks, you know, hatching out from peacocks and peacock chicks getting lost and having to, you know, care for eggs that are hatching and all of that. So let me show you what I am doing with these little ducks. Okay, so here I have my brooder set up for the baby ducks, and this is basically the brooder that I'm using like all the time. And you've seen it in other videos where I've had baby chicks and peacocks and ducks and stuff. And so right now I'm using it again for the baby ducks. I just like it because the blue part is a few inches tall, so it keeps in the bedding and all of that very well. And it just makes it easy to work with. And then the wire top is actually pretty good. It doesn't, you know, let the chicks come out. And then it also holds up the heat lamp. So I have a heat lamp on them. And that is a 100 watt bulb. And it's actually a ceramic bulb, so there's no light coming off of it. Just because I don't want the parrots to be bothered while the ducks are in here. But you can use a light bulb. Um, the, you know, the baby birds will sleep through the night even if there is a light. The ceramic one is better just because it does give them the you know cycle of day and night. Um, but you want heat on them, so don't you know be like, okay, I'm gonna turn it off at night. No, you definitely wanna keep it on at night. And if the only thing that you have to use is a light bulb, then just go ahead and use that. The temperature at you know the very bottom of the light, underneath the light should be about um, 95 degrees. And then the baby birds, uh, whether you have ducks or whatever, will move around as the, you know, for them to get comfortable. If they're cold, they'll go right under the light. Now, you never ever want to use a glass tank as your brooder. You always want it to be open so that there's a lot of airflow. Baby birds, ducks, chickens, peacocks, pheasants, whatever it is, they produce a lot of waste and that'll just get really smelly and the air will be bad. So you don't ever want to use something that doesn't allow for airflow. Always something, you know, with an open top, it will make a better brooder. Now for bedding, um, I'm using those uh, wood shavings and I'm using aspen. You should always use aspen, something safe. Don't ever use cedar um, or I think there's another one. Uh, pine, pine is the other one you don't want to use. Those are really bad for animals. They give them a lot of allergies. They have chemicals on them. So you always want to use something like aspen that's safe. And then I am using a standing water bottle for them. And the water is not dirty. What they do is they eat their food and then they go and they um, stick their little face into the water. And usually a lot of their food comes out of their mouth and it just kind of turns the water brown. But the water's clean. It's, it's normal for them to start looking that way. And then what I'm feeding them 
is a chick starter. This is a flock razor pellet and basically it's just, you know, crumbled up and that way they can eat it. It's not too big for them. And I spread it over a paper towel so that it's easy for them to find and to eat because little baby ducks and animals like that will just peck around at stuff and not really eat. So you want to just make it really easy for them to get to their food. See, there he goes. He's eating. And now he's going back to the water. And so this is a really good brooder to keep the baby ducks in. It's pretty easy. You do have to clean it out often because they do produce a lot of waste. So right now I think it's like maybe leaving it for two to three days is okay because they just hatched. They're about three days old right now. But then as they start getting older, sometimes it does need to be cleaned out about um, once a day, really. Oh, and there they are. They're pecking at my shirt up against the brooder. <laughs> and so this is an easy place to keep them. They have their heat, they have their water, their food, they have a little bit of room to run around and stretch. Um, but they do get kind of bored in here, the baby ducks do. So I'm going to show you some other stuff to do with the baby ducks so that they, you know, have fun and that they are able to really exercise while they're growing and everything. So I'm going to be recording most of this from inside the house because it was actually very, very windy when I took the ducks outside and then the goats were uh, making quite a lot of noise. Uh, but basically what I do is I'll take them out to the yard and I'll let them run around in the grass and they'll eat pieces of the grass and they really enjoy going out there. They're really cute because they'll follow me around so here I'll try to give you a little example of that. Come here ducks, come here, come here! Come here! Come on, come here! Come here! Come here! And they'll be running around chasing after the bugs and they'll sometimes even eat flies, which is fine. They can eat all of that. It's good for them. It's not bad if they swallow a bug. I know sometimes people get really nervous when their animals eat something different like that. But they're ducks. It's totally normal. And you just want to make sure though that wherever you're taking them, it's not grass that's been sprayed with pesticides or stuff like that because that will make them sick. So here it's fine because like we don't do anything with the grass here. We don't put pesticides or fertilizer or anything on it. So it's uh, I guess what you would consider organic. And then I also like to put them in water and uh, I'll put them in like a trough or something like that. Right now we have this little pool so I've been putting them in there and just you know remember this pool is just regular water. There's no chlorine or anything like that in there so it is safe for them. You don't want to put them in an actual swimming pool that has chlorine water. And two, this pool isn't a safe place to leave your baby ducks. I'm with them the whole time. I'm watching them and I have them in here for very short periods of time so that they don't get tired. Now if you did just leave a duck in water like this where they couldn't get out they would drown. So if you don't want to have to like watch them constantly or you want them to get out by themselves once they're tired, what you can do is you can get like a little kiddie pool or something like that and put bricks on one side so that you can make steps for them to get in and out of. So it's really, really important that the ducks, you know, either you take them out when they're tired or you have something where they can actually get in and out, okay? Because just because they're ducks and they do know how to swim very well doesn't mean that they won't eventually get really tired and then just drown if they can't get out. And just be careful where you take them to swim. Like I'm having them here in this pool where I know there's nothing in the water. Like we do have a pond of course, right? So I'm not taking them over there. And you're probably wondering why. Well, the reason I'm not taking them over there is because there are bullfrogs in the pond and some of them are large enough to eat a baby duck that is just hatched. So that's not a risk I am taking with them. And as it says in the video title, Peacock Hatching Baby Ducks, it is a peahen that hatched them. And a lot of people, you know, start getting upset like, oh, it's peafowl and peacocks are males. And if you know enough about peacocks, if, if you know so much about peacocks that you know that hens are called peahens, then you know enough to know that people call all peafowl peacocks because it's just you know peacocks a commonly known word and it's you know that's why I put it up there it's just because that way people know what I'm talking about and for me when I'm doing my videos it's really important that people know what I'm talking about it's more important you know for me to do that 
sometimes than to actually use, you know, the exact, you know, correct words. Because if people don't know what it is that I'm saying, if they don't know what a peahen is, like, oh, what kind of bird is that? Then, you know, there's, I'm not going to be able to reach people. I'm not going to be able to reach people around the world. And that's what I want to do, is I want to be able to include everybody to know what I'm talking about. Thanks for watching this video, and don't forget to watch the farm tour, which I put up recently. And that is done with a drone. You can also buy Happy Tales t-shirts online. Link will be down below. Thanks. Bye.